Welcome to this presentation on the emergence of the Department of Justice in Ireland in the five-year period 1919 to 1924. Our story provides a prism through which the emergence and establishment of the Irish Free State itself can be viewed. And we see how documents drafted a century ago shed new light on the still current name of the Department of Justice in Irish on Ryan Glee Agus Kirt. We will be returning to this photograph in which we see Kevin O'Higgins, Michael Collins and Eamon Duggan coming one after another out through the Chief Secretary's doorway in the upper yard of Dublin Castle on the 16th of January 1922, after the machinery of government had been formally handed over to them by the last Lord Lieutenant or Viceroy of Ireland. And we will also be returning to this notice published three days later on the 19th of January 1922 outlining the offices and functions allotted to the Department of Home Affairs under Eamon Duggan. But to begin our story we are going to leap forward two years to the year 1924. The Department of Justice was established by the Ministers and Secretaries Act 1924. The responsibilities of the department are set out in section 1-3 of that act. It is stated at the end of that subparagraph that the head of that department be styled the Minister for Justice. Immediately before that act came into force, and over the five years prior to that, the Irish minister with the justice portfolio was styled differently, namely the Minister for Home Affairs. The Minister for Home Affairs and the Ministry or Department of Home Affairs were retitled and renamed the Minister for Justice and the Department of Justice respectively by the Ministers and Secretaries Act 1924. Kevin O'Higgins was the first Minister for Justice under that 1924 Act. He was Minister for Home Affairs when he was appointed Minister for Justice. Kevin O'Higgins was appointed Minister for Home Affairs in 1922 as we see from this notice. In fact, there were four ministers for Home Affairs before Kevin O'Higgins, and we see three of them along with O'Higgins in this film clip. These are Michael Collins, to his right beside him Arthur Griffith, and with the cane to the right of O'Higgins, Eamon Duggan. Michael Collins was the first Minister for Home Affairs. The 29-year-old Collins was appointed Minister for Home Affairs on the 22nd of January 1919. Collins was not even in the country that day, not to mention being in the doll, as we see from this photograph of the deputies who were present. Collins was in England, organising De Valera's escape from Lincoln Prison, where he was Feglas Egegalov, locked up by foreigners. It was on the day before that that the Ministry of Home Affairs was established, that is, on the 21st of January 1919, the first day of the assembly of the first stall in the round room in the Mansion House in Dublin. The establishment of the Ministry of Home Affairs was provided for by Section 2 of the Constitution of Dáil Éireann, which was presented in Irish alone at the first meeting of the first Dáil. In that very short 1919 Constitution of Dáil Éireann, the Department of Home Affairs was styled Arach Gnohi Duchish, that is, Ministry of Home Affairs. When de Valera was sprung out of jail, he appointed Collins Minister for Finance and appointed Arthur Griffith Minister for Home Affairs on the 2nd of April 1919. Griffith was from Dublin, a journalist and an intellectual who had considered deeply how the country could achieve independence from Britain peacefully and politically. He wrote this pamphlet, for example, where he argued that Ireland should learn from and replicate Hungary's experience. The first oil was established with the intention of showing the world that Ireland's politicians could administer the affairs of the country themselves. De Valera went to the United States to seek support there for Ireland's independence and to collect money so that the Dáil could administer certain affairs in Ireland. Arthur Griffith assumed command of the Dáil while de Valera was in the States, and the man who is on the right of de Valera, Austin Stack, commenced functioning as Minister for Home Affairs in his place in November 1919, shortly after he had escaped from prison in England. Stack, or Awustin de Stack in Irish, was later officially appointed Minister for Home Affairs. Austin Stack was from Ballymullen, Tralee, and he had played on the Kerry football team that won the All-Ireland Final in 1903. 
in 1916, as commandant of the Kerry Brigade of the Irish Volunteers, he had made preparations for the landing of arms by Roger Casement, and was subsequently arrested and sentenced in June 1916 to penal servitude for life, but he was released under general amnesty a year later. Minister Stack was responsible for advancing one of the major policies of the First Dáil, that is, the extension of arbitration courts throughout the nation, to show that the people of Ireland could administer justice affairs themselves, independently of the Westminster government. Only a small number of those courts were operating, independently and infrequently, when Stack was appointed Minister for Home Affairs. The parish courts in particular were a great success and there was great demand for them from the people to settle disputes among themselves in preference to going before the courts run by the British administration in Ireland at the time. The Republican courts undermined the British courts in Ireland and in 1921 when Dáil Éireann wanted to demonstrate that it could administer the affairs of the country it issued this pamphlet on those courts and the police associated with them. We have a rare photograph of one of those courts sitting in Westport in the summer of 1920 in which we see two Republican policemen on duty in the courtroom standing at attention with their caps on in the centre of the photograph. Those police were established to support the courts, to ensure that the courts could be administered and that they could impose sentences on the people they convicted and that those penalties would be implemented. As the prisons were not under the control of the Dáil at the time, expulsion from their locality or from the country was one of the penalties imposed by those courts. In this really short film clip, we see one of those courts operating in the City Hall in Cork. The Lord Mayor of Cork, Terence McSweeney, was one of the people taking part in those court proceedings. Just months after that film was taken, McSweeney died on hunger strike in Brixton Prison, and the eyes of the world following his story. Of course, all the while the first doll was seeking to gain administration over certain limited affairs in Ireland, the country was still being governed by the British government, with Dublin Castle as their centre of administration. It was there that the most senior people in the civil service and in the police in Ireland were based, as well as those in charge of the British army in the country. And, at the same time as Dáil Éireann was trying to achieve independence from Westminster through political means, the IRA were opposing by force of arms those who were implementing British rule in the country. Two members of the Royal Irish Constabulary were killed on this road in Salahad Beg, a few miles outside Tipperary Town, on the same day as the first stall assembled, on the 21st of January 1919. Dan Breen, Sean Tracy and five other members of the IRA ambushed two county council workers who were carrying gelignite to a quarry with the two constables guarding them. It was with that killing in January 1919 that the War of Independence in Ireland really began, a war that lasted two and a half years until July 1921. Well over a thousand people were killed in that war. After the Salahad Beg ambush, Sean Tracy and Dan Breen went to Dublin, where they assisted Michael Collins' squad, a squad that killed spies and detectives in particular, working for Dublin Castle. The British forces caught up with Tracy on Talbot Street in Dublin on the 14th of October 1920, and both he and the detective that had come on him were killed. An American camera crew that happened to be filming in nearby O'Connell Street that day heard the gunfire, rushed to the scene and took this footage. The two members of the RIC that Sean Tracy, Dan Breen and their comrades killed were the first of many members of that force who lost their lives in the Anglo-Irish War, or Cogan Asirshu, the War of Independence, between 1919 and mid-1921. Approximately 400 policemen were killed in total, and many more of them resigned because of the campaign against them. The Black and Tans and the Auxiliaries were sent to Ireland to support the RIC. 
and, in addition to killing members of the IRA and many civilians, black and tans and auxiliaries burned and destroyed houses and businesses in retaliation as they did in Cork City in December 1920. But between the political work of the Dáil and the IRA's campaign, it was clear to the Westminster government that they could not rule the country by force. A truce was announced on the 11th of July 1921, so that talks could take place to seek to reach a settlement. As a result of those talks, the treaty between Great Britain and Ireland was signed on the 6th of December 1921. Of the five signatories on behalf of Ireland of that treaty, three were ministers for Home Affairs, Arthur Griffith, Michael Collins, and the man appointed Minister for Home Affairs the month after that signing, Eamon Duggan. According to this witness statement given years later to the Bureau of Military History by Deputy J.J. O'Kelly, certain people had been surprised that Eamon Duggan was chosen to be a member of the Irish delegation for the negotiations on the treaty. However, it was from contact made by a British civil servant with both Griffith and the lawyer Duggan that the process was initiated from which the truce and those formal meetings to achieve agreement came. Duggan was the son of a member of the RIC. He had taken part in the Easter Rising and had been imprisoned by the British authorities for so doing. De Valera rejected the treaty as he believed its terms would subvert the Republic. He resigned from the Dáil on the 9th of January 1922 after a small majority of the deputies voted to accept the treaty. Like de Valera, the Minister for Home Affairs, Austin Stack, rejected the treaty and he also left the Dáil. It was then that Eamon Duggan was appointed Minister for Home Affairs in place of Austin Stack on the 10th of January 1922. A provisional government was established under the terms of the treaty and Duggan was Minister for Home Affairs in both the Dáil government and the provisional government. That is, he was simultaneously Minister of the Dáil Ministry of Home Affairs and Minister of the Provisional Government's Department of Home Affairs. Duggan was with Collins and O'Higgins when they went to Dublin Castle at around 2.30pm on a cold Monday, the 16th of January 1922, and received what they called the surrender of the castle from the British government. In fact, this was the formal transfer of the departments of state, offices and services hitherto administered by the British government in the Irish Free State. The new Department of Home Affairs established following the treaty was put in charge of the offices and bodies that, prior to that, had responsibility for the functions and services relating to the administration of the police and courts in Ireland under the British regime. British forces began preparing to leave the new Irish Free State. The Free State forces began taking their place, one group leaving and another arriving. Unfortunately, war broke out between the Irish who were in favour of the treaty and the Irish who were against it, the Civil War, or Cogan Agurid, the War of the Friends. The forces of those against the treaty took over the four courts in Dublin in mid-April 1922, and, after many attempts to reach a peaceful settlement, the Free State forces laid siege to the four courts at the end of June. That battle lasted almost a fortnight, and that event is generally cited as being the beginning of the Irish Civil War. The warfare in the capital wasn't limited to the four courts, and, of course, there were incidents of fighting throughout the country, and in the countryside, as well as in the cities and towns. The Civil War continued for approximately a year, and again, well over a thousand people were killed in that war. Arthur Griffith died on the 12th of August 1922, aged 51, from a broken heart, it is generally agreed, because of the civil war and the pressure that he had been under seeking to reach agreement on the Anglo-Irish Treaty. We see Michael Collins here at Griffith's funeral in Glasnevin Cemetery, Dublin. Ten days later, on the 22nd of August 1922, Collins was killed at Bailenham Law in his native county of Cork, and he too was laid to rest in Glasnevin Cemetery in Dublin.
and it was in the following month, as we saw earlier, and see here again from this notice in the Irish Ifigool, our official gazette, that Kevin O'Higgins was appointed Minister for Home Affairs when the third doll was established under the presidency of William T. Cosgrave. That Cosgrave government executed 77 people, including friends of O'Higgins, during the Civil War. And while the Civil War came to an end in late April 1923, because he had been Minister for Home Affairs in the government that ordered those executions, O'Higgins was assassinated four years later in 1927 on his way to Mass. He was only 35 years old. Two years later, in 1929, Austin Stack died, aged 50. The periods he had spent on hunger strikes, originally locked up by foreigners, Feglas Egegalov, but subsequently, during the Civil War, locked up by Irish people, had, of course, done detrimental damage to his health. He had married the widow of a member of the RIC a couple of years earlier, the woman of the house where he had stayed in Dublin after escaping from prison in 1919, and we see both of them here in the garden the year before Austin died suddenly. That turbulent period in Ireland from which the Department of Justice emerged in 1924 is reflected in there being five people in total ministers for home affairs in that five-year period between 1919 and 1924 and in the fate of four of those five ministers. Two of them were executed and two died young due to the affairs of that time. But imagine the excitement and anxiety of Kevin O'Higgins, Michael Collins and Eamon Duggan on the 16th of January 1922 as they ran out into that courtyard in the very heart of Dublin Castle after they had, as they claimed, accepted the surrender of that castle from the British government. We will conclude this presentation with a very brief look at some of the staff of the Ministry or Department of Home Affairs. In June 1919, the first Dáil provided for the establishment of a national civil service. By that time, seven people were employed full-time in the civil service. That number had increased to 300 by January 1922. In comparison with that, however, there were 12,000 people working in the British state system in Ireland, not including the police. The Ministry of Home Affairs had its first office at No. 45 Henry Street, just off O'Connor Street in the centre of Dublin, where this shop is now. They had to move a number of times in those early days, and it has come a long way since it was based in Henry Street to its current headquarters in 50-51 to St Stephen's Green. We have the names of some of the officials who worked for the Ministry or Department of Home Affairs up to January 1922. The second person on that list, Madge Clifford, was the first person employed in the ministry. She was Austin Stack's personal secretary when the office of the ministry was established on Henry Street at the end of 1919. The first person on the list, Dan Brown, was a solicitor in Tralee, County Kerry, when he was recruited by Austin Stack to work in the court section of the ministry. He acted as Secretary of the Ministry for lengthy periods from November 1920 on, had responsibility for the organisation of the Republican courts and the Republican police force. He resigned in March 1922 because of his dissatisfaction with the provisional government's policy on the Dáil courts. Eleven years later, in March 1933, Eamon de Valera appointed him Secretary of the Department of Justice, replacing Secretary Henry O'Friel, whom we will be returning to. The Dáil Civil Service was transformed when it was increased from about 300 people to over 20,000 people with the assimilation of that civil service and the Dublin Castle Civil Service. Staff from Dublin Castle's Chief Secretary's Office, together with other individual civil servants who, up until then, had been working under the Castle authorities, were transferred into the Department of Home Affairs. It was the new Minister for Home Affairs, Kevin O'Higgins, who in September 1922 invited Henry O'Friel, or Henri O'Friel, to become Secretary of the Department of Home Affairs. O'Friel, from Donegal, who served as a Dáil judge, had entered public life in 1920 and was Chairman of Dublin County Council in 1920-1921. In November 1921, he wrote the preface to the Handbook of Irish Terms for the Use of Public Bodies, published that year by the Irish County Council's General Council. And in early 1922, he represented that General Council in consultations relating to the teaching of Irish in schools. 
This presentation originated in an investigation into who might have been instrumental in the Department of Justice being styled in Irish on Ryan Gleagas Kurt, which is not a direct translation of the Department of Justice. Henri O'Friel had both the authority and knowledge or appreciation of Irish that would have facilitated his being instrumental in that regard. At the time of being so styled in Irish in the Ministers and Secretaries Act 1924, on Ryan Glee Kurt would have been a direct translation of the Department of Law and Justice. In the TypeScript version of Public Notice No. 6, concerning the allocation of national services, published in Irish Ifigool on the 4th of April 1922, we see that law and justice were given as the first two areas of responsibility of the Ministry of Home Affairs, established under the Anglo-Irish Treaty. And we see that justice in that context was translated as cart the genitive form of which, cert, that is, of justice, is contained, along with the genitive of glee, that is, of law, in the Irish title of the department still today, that is, an Ryan Glee Agus Kirt. That Irish title was the result of a late amendment made to the Ministers and Secretaries Bill in which the Minister for Justice was styled an Tara Um Glee Agus Kirt, literally, the Minister for Law and Justice. In a draft of the notice published on the 4th of April 1922, a Ministry of Home Affairs and Justice under Eamon Duggan is mentioned, with that ministry having both a Department of Home Affairs and a Department of Justice. Furthermore, in an initial draft by the Parliamentary Draftsman of the Ministers and Secretaries Bill, dated the 28th of December 1922, provision was made for a law department, that is, Ryan Lee, under the Minister for Home Affairs. And in the draft circulated on the 19th of July 1923, provision was made for a Department of Home Affairs and a Department of Law, the head of which department was to be the Attorney General. That Department of Law later became the Office of the Attorney General. Note finally, in relation to the Irish name of the Department of Justice, and in the context of the drafting of the Ministers and Secretaries Bill, that Henri O'Friel was appointed a member of a small committee to examine the allocation of functions among government departments, to review all state services with a view to a regrouping of departments under the various ministries, and that that committee was chaired by the then Minister for Local Government, Ernest Blyde, or Arnon de Blyde, who himself was deeply committed to the Irish language. Just as the Ministry of Home Affairs had made significant achievements between 1919 and 1921 under the first stall, as we mentioned earlier, the Ministry or Department of Home Affairs had made significant achievements between 1922 and 1924 before being styled the Department of Justice on Ryan Gleagas Kurt in the Ministers and Secretaries Act 1924, in which act the transformation of the administration of justice in the Irish Free State between 1922 and 1924 is reflected. In 1923, the new police force established in 1922 was styled on Garda Síochána. And in 1924, the fundamental act under which the court system of today was established, the Courts of Justice Act 1924, was enacted. When, in 1925, the restoration of the four courts was commenced, it served as a symbol of the rebuilding and the building anew that the Irish Free State Government undertook. Achieving that position in Ireland's history was paid dearly for, in the period from early 1919 to mid-1923 in particular. The ministers and officials of the Ministry or Department of Home Affairs had a particular place in those events. And during that time, they laid the foundation on which the justice system of the state was built. They fitted their actions to their words. Rinader Bart, Dorea Maria, Gormagwif.